Want to win a new Chevy, Nissan, Toyota, or Hyundai? Come to any McCarthy Auto Group location and register for a chance to shoot your way into a brand new vehicle during the Big 12 Tournament. See McCarthy Auto Group for details. Welcome back. It's Track Talk here on Sports Radio 810 WHB, live from the McCarthy Auto Group studio. And again, today's show brought to you by McCarthy Auto Group. Check them out at kccars.com. Joining us now on the show is a guy that you hear on our show a lot over the last few years and uh, just been a great writer over the years at Gaston Gazette. Now out on his own, MontyDutton.com. And Monty joins us now on the show. Monty, how you doing? Hey, I'm fine. Nice to hear your voice. It's good to hear. Man, I tell you what, I'm checking out your website, MontyDutton.com. This is uh, your blog page and uh, a very interesting story, which leads us into the big news that uh, came down the pipe this week. Denny, the whipping boy. How about Denny Hamlin getting fined $25,000 for his comments after that race? I can't believe it. Can you, Monty? No, I can't help but wonder if uh, I actually pose this question of how many fans are uh, pulling for Denny to win in Las Vegas just sort sort of stick it to NASCAR. Because uh, NASCAR closely monitors social media, and I don't monitor it closely as they do, and I don't have I don't have – technology to do so but i understand from people in the know that the comments are about 95 percent in denny's favor so i really think nascar is uh has really shot itself in the foot with this because i think most fans think it outrageous because they want their race car drivers to speak up and i also don't think that what uh, hamlin said was overly critical i mean uh i think he basically said that the car the new car is about like the old car when it first gets started at the start out. And NASCAR is so paranoid about it, dating back to the fact that with the COT in 2007, after Kyle Busch won the first COT race, mm-hmm. he, he he said the car so, he slightly changed the language. Right. Stank. Uh, yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> and, and so I think that they pretty pretty much demanded that uh, uh, I, the bad thing is, is for a journalist, and when with Denny basically says, I've tried to promote the sport, and I'm not going to talk about anything in the future. Uh, I think that uh, I don't think I think a lot. I mean, the analogies are so false because first of all, uh, the response has been, well, other sports they they find people for criticizing the referees, but that's comparing that, that that's not a valid analogy because. It, Denny didn't say a race was fixed or they wanted Danica to win or he didn't question the integrity. What he said was more like a, a, someone in another sport, say a basketball player, saying, I think the rims are too tight or, right. or, or you know, uh, uh, we can't, uh, uh, we're, at, we're at a disadvantage because we because the, the rules have changed and it hurts our lineup or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so... I think it's far beyond that, and I think it's something that most sports have enough sense not to do. And go ahead. I was going to ask you. You know, NASCAR has been so sensitive about the reputation to the fans, but I think this hurts NASCAR and the brand that they're trying to build and the identity that they're trying to work on more than if they, you know, they they find twenty five thousand dollars. People are looking like NASCAR. What the heck are you doing? If they would have just kept their mouth shut and just let it you know, slide under the radar, we wouldn't be talking about it now. Now it's painting this negative picture towards NASCAR in a way that I don't think people would ever figure that it would have happened this way. I don't know. Well, they want, they realize that there are many fans who say that the modern drivers uh, are, you know, they're more generic. They don't, that they aren't. I don't think that a driver, a driver can be rich and famous and successful. But I don't think he can become a folk hero like Dale Earnhardt mm-hmm. unless the fans feel like he's sort of standing up for them and telling it like it is. Mm-hmm. And so we all understand that you have to be uh, positive and support your sponsors and all that. And, you know, there's a lot of areas where, you know, uh, drivers are corporate spokesmen. They have to watch what they say. I think it's interesting that uh, it, it varies on, I mean, I think the way the setup is right now, uh, there's uh, it kind of it, uh, on, on how 
outspoken you can be in some ways depends on who your sponsor is. Mm -hmm. Dale Earnhardt was sponsored during his career by Wrangler Jeans and by Goodwrench. And I don't think there was ever any, uh, there was ever any pressure on Dale Earnhardt to not be who he was. And I think that's one of the reasons that he's remembered so fondly. Yeah, what kind of a bad precedent does this set, Monty? You've covered NASCAR for a long, long time. I mean, we live in America. It's free speech out there. But, you know, this uh, this stands, this fine stands. Are we ever going to get drivers to be able to speak the honest truth about anything in the future? And even if they do, what kind of credibility will the drivers have? This really puts a tough spot. It puts the drivers in a really tough spot, does it not? Well, yes, but I really think that the biggest loser is the fans there because I think that if you make make drivers, you know, it's kind of like a kind of like a ball player uh, who isn't as good as he could be because he spends more time trying to figure out trying to avoid mistakes than to just go out there and win. I mean, I think that you have to if you're making your comments and you have to weigh every word. I think ultimately it keeps people from recognizing the personalities and there's some people who by the way there's not very many people i mean there's not many people many people say nascar was right that he has no business doing that i think most fans are are outraged by it do you think you think the fine will be paid do you think the stock car commission will drop that fine how do you feel well, that it will come vows, out in the end i know that he's vowed that he's not going to pay i heard he still vows that he will not pay it i think that there's some uh, codicil where NASCAR could deduct it from his race winnings. And I think Denny's position is, okay, fine, but I'm not going to sit here and write a check myself. Right. So they're at a pretty, they're pretty much of a standoff. Uh, I'm sure that cooler heads will prevail. I think that's likely. I think it's also, there's a good chance that the, uh, that the fine will be overturned on appeal. Uh, probably, and, and probably at this point, NASCAR realizing what a public relations disaster this is mm -hmm. probably it might be convenient to nascar if the fine was overturned they, but, they may convey to the committee that you know it'd be okay if you overturn this they might even convey that to him right yeah it, the, the nascar uh, appeals process is not very comparable to the supreme court <laughs> right exactly yeah. well you know even if the uh, stock car commission overturns the fine when you make a statement to NASCAR, I'm not paying that fine. NASCAR still has the power to come back at Denny Hamlin and uh, make his life difficult, does it Does it not? Well, what we have, I think, is sort of a standoff. We have kind of a gut check on both sides. I mean, I think NASCAR has Good to weigh to the ramifications. I think, that, uh, I think that they are very heavy-handed and basically try to send a message, look, bud, uh, you're not going to criticize this new car. By the way, just in regard to the new car, yep. this is one area where I honestly think that, that the whole purpose that the new car was probably designed with intermediate tracks in mind because that was the weak weakness of the COT. And I think that it's really a little bit premature to judge the car based on Daytona and Phoenix. I agree. I think that the first sign is the race tomorrow, and, I, and I've written that several times in the last few weeks. And so I do think it's a little bit premature. My general feeling is is that the car is not going to have too much of an effect on the racing on short tracks and road courses. And, in fact, the biggest beneficiary of the COT, if there was one, was the fact that road racing became much more popular and okay. they put on some really good races. I think that, I think though, that the COT was sort of designed with plate racing in mind. They didn't realize that it was going to become, that the two-car bump drafting was going to occur, although I, I know a lot of people who criticized the bump drafting who watched the Daytona 500 and wish they had it back. Yeah, definitely. After Was that, uh, where would you rank that as one of the most boring? Is 2000 worse than what we had this year, or is there one that comes to mind that was worse than this year's well, Daytona 500? I've been covering the sport a long time, and uh, I think it's taken various, various, uh, uh, various. I mean, there, there was there was a period of time, a little over a decade ago, where where the the plate racing fell off. I think it's a little bit simplistic when people say either I like the pack racing or I like the bump drafting. My personal favorite time was back when the plates weren't on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even back when 
when they had when, when the slingshot was possible and popular, yeah. where there might be just four or five drivers uh, dueling for the lead. But when you really have a car pull off and basically just whip, get whipped past the car in front of him, that may be impossible to recreate uh, with the technology of today. But just as a pre- as, from my own personal preference, my favorite plate racing was back in those days. And I don't think it's just a matter of power and the restrictor plates mm-hmm. sapping power from the engines. I just think that it's uh, it was it was something that was a unique uh, facet of of the era in which some of the most some of the most uh, successful drivers in NASCAR history were in their prime, or at least the, there was the, the generation switching right. from uh, Richard Petty and David Pearson and Bobby Allison to uh, to Dale Earnhardt and then later on Jeff Gordon. But I mean, uh, Darrell Walter, also another person who's sort of a contemporary of Earnhardt. So uh, my personal feeling goes farther back than any of this. Yeah, my but, my favorite plate race is 2000 when Dale Earnhardt won his final race at Talladega. I was there. Yeah. And I, and I don't ever recall a race where people stood up on their feet for the entire race like that race when they had the wicker bar across the top of it 40 cars were running in a pack that's when kenny wallace pushed earnhardt to the win at the last five laps it was unbelievable that race now it was just a miracle that we didn't tear up even more cars during that race but it was just as a fan sitting in the stands i hadn't been any more excited since that race when it comes to play that was a wondrous race yeah uh i i I think that um um it has taken many twists and turns and and here's what i think is a pertinent fact this is the way nascar always operates so they get really angry and they 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 sit there and they sort of uh talk about how it's wonderful everything's great we and, and they don't ever admit a mistake but here's what i'll bet I'll bet you before the springtime race at Talladega, I'll just bet you that the rules change. One thing I think will change is is that when I was watching Daytona, and I'm watching from home because I'm not working for the newspaper anymore. I, I just, it's the first time I wasn't at Daytona 500 in 21 years. But from watching at home, I, I, I was struck by the fact that the spoilers on the back of the cars for the plate races look like something from 1972. Mm-hmm. They're tiny. Mm-hmm. And I'll bet you that, that the spoilers get bigger. Uh, I, 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 I'm just saying that on the one hand they say there's nothing wrong it's just wonderful and they have everybody right. cheerleading about it but I bet you that they'll change the package the drivers talk too race. much about how free the cars were when cars got up next to them and all um, yeah I, I agree with you I think they're going to have to make an adjustment I hate to bring up this subject but I have to are you uh, Are you like me are, uh, and I appreciate them trying to create new interest in NASCAR and trying to work to different angles but uh, is this Danica thing still? Where are you at on that? And the uh, and how much publicity she gets? Is it, is she worthy of it? it uh, obviously, it's good to bring in some new fans. The numbers were up at Daytona because of her qualifying. But how would you assess her and and where she's at in her Cup career? Well, I've actually paid really close attention to Danica Patrick. There's a lot of times in recent years where I hadn't really had to write a race story about the nationwide race, but I would attend it, and I basically would get my binoculars and watch her very closely. I actually think that what's happened so far is fairly predictable because she's cautious. She had a really fast car at Daytona and Stayed out she of trouble. didn't take any chances. She held her position and and then she she sort of the fact that she didn't make any moves when other people did hurt her in the last couple of laps. I think that if you look at her statistics, she was tenth in the nationwide series last year and she she was that's more. That doesn't sound as impressive when you realize that there are only three drivers, all of whom in inferior equipment, besides they were behind her in points, who ran in every race. Mm-hmm. So, I think it defies belief that someone whose average finish was 19th in the Nationwide Series is going to be a contender week in and week out. I think that she has the decision-making skills that make her do okay on plate races. But I actually think when you think about it, she started first and finished eight in Daytona. She's qualified 40th at Phoenix and was in a wreck and finished way in the field. She's going to have her times. I think she has made progress. And the interesting thing about Danica Patrick is because she's a celebrity, because she's sexy, because she's on commercials during the Super Bowl, she, she's sort of, her popularity is in part derived the same way that there have been, uh, like Anna Kornikova in tennis. Mm-hmm. And that's okay because we, you know, 
people are interested in her. She's a magnetic personality. But I, I think it's very unlikely that she's not going to have her, her, her struggles. And, and so I honestly think that, just like I was saying with the new car, I think that her showing, I think that if she doesn't do well on intermediate tracks, then over time the, uh, the, Ra- the Danica craze Whoa. will subside. Yeah. And uh, I think what's interesting about her is that her, because of the fact that she brings sponsorship and she gets attention, she is having a much longer chance. There have been dozens of drivers, Boston Reed, Blake Feast, David Steele. Right, right. Uh, the, probably the best example is Casey Atwood, who might have had some promise, but they never really got a decent shot, and they, and they disappeared before they, they – it's interesting to see if someone who has years and years to get better, if they can actually get the knack of it. Mm-hmm. And it makes you wonder how many other – people might could have if they'd had a decent chance so i think that's the advantage that danica patrick has and i don't really begrudge her for it because in some ways she's she's been very adept at marketing herself and she's created opportunities that other people haven't had right but i think that that in some ways i think that'll be fascinating to watch all right we're up against the break money but if you had to lay down your hard-earned money right now and make a wager when danny patrick's career is over in nascar will she win a race at the cup level? I think in this age, it's not impossible <laughs> because with the wave arounds and the lucky dogs, it, it reminds me of something a driver once joked around with me. I walked up to the driver and I said, you know, in this day and age, drivers got to drive like hell to lose a lap. Right. And the driver turned around to me and he said, yeah, and you finally lose the son of a gun, they won't let you keep it. <laughs> right, 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 right. So do you so think, though, I, I think mean, if you had a race in any car, she won because of a, of a, of a mileage, mileage right, race. Right. And so I think it's possible. And I, and I mean, you know, she may develop, but I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I certainly, I don't think that she's going to be a driver who's going to have a lot of wins, but I'd say it's about 50 50 if she'll ever win a race. And that's, and I, and I mean, people will say I'm bashing her, but I think I'm just being realistic. No, I, I'm with you. I don't think she will win. And if she does, it'll be at a plate race because she's driving Hendrick equipment. As you stated, she's got top shelf equipment. And if you put yourself in position late in the race, anybody can win. We've seen it. We've seen guys win the well, pole down there. Example. Lloyd Allen you, won. Lloyd, what, what was the guy's name? Drove the Hooters car. What was his name? Lloyd Allen. Lloyd Allen the pole won the pole. Did we ever hear anything from him after he won the pole at Daytona? Well, he wasn't in the top ten after one lap that day he won the pole. That's yeah. true. Right. But uh, I think that when you look at that, all right, she could win a race. I'll tell you why. In the, at the end of Daytona? When Jimmy Johnson, the inside lane, was gradually moving up, right. Danica Patrick could have moved down in front of J- Jimmy Johnson and maybe gotten pushed to the front. Right. So that's when you have to say it's not impossible. Right, exactly. Okay. Monty, everybody needs to check out your work again. MontyDutton.com, a daily blog on there. It's doing a great job. We love your read. Uh, what else you got going on on uh, MontyDutton.com? Well, I blog about a lot of things. Mo- uh, my my racing stuff gets more attention, but I try to write Easy. about life and writing. I just got back late last night because I've been uh, trying to sell my my novel, The Audacity of Dope, and I had uh, right. had uh, had had appearances in uh, Martinsville, Virginia, on Friday, and Winston Salem last night. And then I drove. I actually had uh, dinner afterwards with Dan Zacharias, the longtime Ford PR man, who's been a great friend for years. So uh, I'm going on the road some to sing songs and sell books all right hopefully we but, can get uh, you back into kansas city someday well i hope so yeah. thanks for enjoy talking to you as always all right monty thanks so much okay there's monty dutton check him out at monty com. if you like opinions you're gonna like monty dutton we'll be back with more track talk here on sports radio 810 in a moment stay tuned